everybody. It's time for your favorite part of the week. KCM is back once again for week number five. We're starting out here with Saxory versus mine. Game number one. Here we go. Saxory versus mine. A great start to a great lineup here. We even have effort. For once, <laughs> this is going to be a great week, Shun. Yeah, I'm literally like giddy with excitement right now. I was just saying before the cast, like the three players I really wanted to see was Hero, Effort, and Zealot. And then I was thinking out loud that there's no way they would put more than two of those guys in, which is a shame. But they put Effort and Zealot out. I'm kind of stoked. And Saxory is a really solid Zerg player. He's come through the mud. You know, he's come out through. He's gone through the like a Shawshank Redemption. Like he's gone through a river of shit and come out clean the other side. Saying, you know what I mean? Like it's, 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 it's a hard feat to get to the pro level as an amateur. Uh, as an up and coming player, the pros will all figure you out and they'll just start smashing you for years. And it's up to you to like weather that and come through that the other side. And a lot of people can't do it and they just get smashed and dominated and you never hear from them again. So actually, one of the very few players that made it through that and has come to join the ranks of the higher echelon players. I, I see what you're saying now. Yeah, Saxory has been through the muck. Um, he has had moments of power. We've seen him in situations where he seemed like he was going to overtake a lot of those old school pros, but it hasn't quite happened yet. He's really evolved his play a lot, but he's not quite at that level like a hero right. um, or an effort here. But uh, we're looking towards him to be that player, that amateur player who can surpass that, you know, that 1% chance or that one per, you know, the, the, the cutoff or that filter, the great filter of the small percentage of people who are actually able to uh, ascend to that highest echelon. Honestly, it's so impressive. Like, it's more impressive than like being a neurosurgeon or something because like there's far, there's a far, in terms of being a zero sum game and like what percentage of players get to that level. Like, yeah, this is more crazy than being like a surgeon or something. Yeah, well, um, maybe we could compare it to like uh, becoming a chess champion or something like that. How many people have become grandmasters? How many people have become Become, you know the highest level of uh, StarCraft player. Right. I'm sure there's a, there's right. a similar, there's a correlation. I would, I would argue account. that chess is easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, Ling's here catching this first SCV. The first map we've got for our pool is Troy and ZVT on Troy. Uh, how do you feel about this matchup? Um, just from uh, the games you play. Honestly, like a bit hit and miss. Like it can look fairly standard, even though there are is this possibility of like the gases being manipulated in some way. You could do like a bit of a cheeky one base lurker build on this map. It can sometimes be good because they, they will do this kind of wall in and it's kind of hard to then bunker deep uh, after that so like a one hatch lurker play can kind of abuse this and then then you have the the win condition of also killing the gases you actually have to win with the one hatch lurker either so yeah i don't know like there's some interesting ways you can approach this map in zvt but you can also just play a very standard game on it as well and not too much weirdness will occur i think it's pretty strong for um what saxory is doing right now which is Getting a third base up uh, at another main and then killing the gas geysers, uh, which kind of sections that area off and makes it impossible to attack into. So you can just defend at one location right. with the uh, sunken colonies and be really greedy. Um, Looks like the Marines are going to come up here and try to prevent that from happening. They're going to try to bully the Lings away from this assimilator, and it'll be up to Saxory to kill these Marines. These Marines are, are dead now because there's no way that they're going to get home. Can they kill this hatchery, though? Yeah, he's going to make a bunker to try and double down on this and get the value that he wants out of these five Marines because he knows they're pretty much dead in the water to the Lings eventually. He doesn't have the DPS to kill the hatchery before some Lings will come to join these 
these others. So eventually he'll have to get inside this bunker if he wants any hope at trading with these links. And it looks like he's going to try and pounce on those Marines before they get into the bunker. Not able to get any of those Marines, but we'll be catching a few of the links coming out of that hatchery at least. And he should have enough links to break this eventually. You need about 10 to 12 links to break the bunker if there's one or two SUVs repairing. So he should still be able to get this and he'll time it with the, the links hatching out of the eggs here to go for a surround with this next pair of links coming out this next egg here. Oh, it's getting really low right now. He's going to go at the last possible second, jiving on top of the SUVs. He's got to kill them. Oh, man, this is not going well. Wow. And it looks like the hatchery is probably going to go down. More Marines are coming up to assist this. Dude, he never went for Ling speed. He was getting so greedy here. Yeah. He skipped the Ling speed, and now he's paying the price. Yeah, he's trying to like be a little bit like meta gamey and like go for the guests uh, kill with uh, to, to to avoid having to like invest in early game defense. But mine's a very cerebral player. Like he's not gonna let you get away with that kind of like meta game. He's gonna like have his own like adjustment involved to like you know hit you at a critical timing where you just don't have enough to deal with it and deny you that um, like bit of greed. And now he's gonna punish you as well. So yeah, really great play from mine. Kind of like reminiscent of one of my games I played very recently where I like almost killed the bunker of like one HP. Or but the SUV's barely repaired it in time. It's really sad. So sad when that happens, man. And mine now back at home. He's made, you know, those Marines that we said were going to be killed 100%. They've made their way all the way back here. And this army is getting really, really strong. Um, two medics and what is this? 12 Marines moving out on the map. That's mm -hmm. a uh, uh, busting force here. But counterattack, two fire bats in the wall. Dude, mind is just so smart. Absolutely handling everything, living up to his namesake. Coming across the map now, three sunkins on the high ground. It seems like you shouldn't be able to break this, but I tell you, it can be broken. He's going to go for it here. Well, especially with the two sunkins morphing, it's a little bit too slow. There are some links coming in from the pincer from behind. We'll get a good surface area on those Marines, force them into retreat, and get some exit kills as well. So most of these Marines are actually going to go down to that, which actually is a pretty good trade for Saxory. The only thing that's really negative right now is the fact we don't have access to the third gas for Saxory. He has got some gas banked up to go for some powerful amount of muters to be begin with but he's not going to have the kind of critical timings that he would like to he's going to maybe be a little bit greedy here squeeze out some drones to try and go into a bit of a more macro zerg as a, with a delayed third base here but i'm not too sure how this will line up i think he's going to have to rely on some very strong mootless micro to even out the odds here. yeah that uh bus there ill-fated with the lings coming in from behind that brings saxory back into a playable position but it's not a good position at all. We have to get another base up and operational. It's going to be the bottom left-hand corner that's being taken. He's going to start to kill these assimilators. Mine can't get out here in time to stop this one, at least. So these assimilators will go down. Starport's already on the way. Queen's Nest. We're going to have Hive here shortly. Um, you got to get that hive up quickly here because if you're going to go right. for a play like this, uh, it's really common for the Terran player to respond with a tank push. From the low ground, yeah. you can actually hit the gas uh, over there at the natural. Honestly, like, he probably can just tank push anyway because of how late this hive will be. So he has got the factory finished right now, and he would scan and see there is no um, Queen's Nest on the way. So he has the timing to tank push if he so chooses. But maybe he's thinking cross map and doesn't necessarily need to tank push. Maybe he's actually even considering that as being one of his uh, potential losses. Uh, and the Queen's Nest wasn't, like, too too late, I guess. So he doesn't need to go tank push here. I'm actually kind of happy that he's not because uh, playing tank push cross map with a bit of an uncertainty in the game state, maybe. A little bit unwise. Yeah, I kind of agree. Uh, I think that tank push is just so strong, though, on these positions. Yeah. Like, you can hit that gas from the low ground. Anytime you can oh, do yeah. that, it's it just becomes so powerful. So, he's not going to do that here. Uh, instead, getting lots of barracks out. He's going to have those vessels pretty soon here. And there's not a lot of time for Saxory. We're at eight minutes and the mutas are just hitting now. This is so late, almost nine minutes here uh, before the mutas actually get in force uh, at the Terran base, which is crazy, crazy late. I'm wondering, is he going to transition into... I'm trying to think what he can transition into here. Is he going to go straight into Guardians, maybe, and just bank up gas for Guardians, or is he going to try and do like a crazy zerg kind of thing? I don't know. There's not enough gas for basically anything. This gas is so late here. 
Uh, there's going to be so many vessels. Even if you do put out guardians, there's going to be irradiates ready for them. Um, it seems like... I don't think he uh, upgraded irradiate yet, right? He didn't research that yet. I think he's, he's floating the science facility right now. So um, maybe going to bank up some energy here first and then get that irradiate. But usually there's... Okay, it is going to be guardians. There should be enough irradiate to handle this. Yeah, I think it makes sense, like, given the game state, like, Guardians is the only, like, highest EV play here. I think everything else just is losing, no matter what, whereas Guardians have, like, a little bit of a tempo swing that maybe you can make something work. He is going for, like, um, fast four base as well to kind of catch up as well, so he, maybe he can produce an ungodly amount of uh, Guardians in the coming phases of the game that will overrun mine, but his vessel timings are pretty sharp, so I imagine he will still have a lot of irradiates uh, available to him to combat this. Yeah, he will for sure, and there's not really a lot to defend that push that's coming uh, towards his natural. He's got four, okay, he's got five sunken, so five sunken on high ground. I rate that against this number of Marines. I think he can hold that off. Uh, and yeah. like, like we were talking about before, this is the only area that he has to defend by land. So as long as there's no dropships out, he should be okay. Uh, my worry, though, is that we are going to see dropships here pretty soon. And uh, with Guardians being morphed, they're not very fast. They're, it's not like he's going to morph them back at home to defend. What is he yeah. actually going to defend dropships with? Right, right. Yeah, these, these, these mutas need to be very passive. They'll be harassing the Bible, forcing stims, keeping track of it. For, but mainly, these mutas need to be retained for anti-drop. Because he is doing what I thought he would do. He's doing Guardian potent. He's going Guardian tech if he needs to to defend. And he's also going straight into crazies which is pretty much exactly how I thought he would play in this game state. Gotcha. So there's the Guardians here on high ground. That's really difficult to break now with Guardians up there uh, helping to defend these sunken colonies. It's, uh, I mean, it's great against tank as well, right? Tanks are going to siege up and the Guardians are going to be able to hit them from range. So uh, this is going to be an interesting defense here. This is not something we often see. Here comes the first couple of irradiates. They're going to damage these uh, Guardians guardians very badly he's gonna go for the tanks trying to split here but it's a little bit rough running straight up this ramp is mine gonna break everything before the consume is ready he does get the consume but he's got nothing to dark swarm on top of that's actually gonna help mind if he throws that down and there it is the defiler gets killed as well the nidus goes down everything falls apart here saxory just not enough guardians to hold this bush and yeah, oh, a drop down here in the bottom left as well. Wow, mind everywhere. Absolutely overwhelming sacks are here. The rookie on the come up just getting dismantled by mind. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I expected it to go as such, but I, I can't really fault Saxory. He, he was so far behind and he went for a play that he thought that would give him the best odds of winning. And I kind of agree with his logic there. I don't think he can do really anything else and hope to win. But it's just, yeah, you just haven't got enough to defend, unfortunately. Game number two here with mine versus best. Blitz Y is that map. Now, this should be a fun match, man. I love watching best smash positions, but I feel like mine has the smarts to, you know, bait best into a bad spot. Just, it, I really wonder if, even if he baits him in, sometimes it's like, oh, this, this is definitely the Terran player baiting best into a bad attack, and then it just works, and it doesn't make any sense, and we all scratch our heads. <laughs> yeah, if anything, you might just help Best pull the trigger at the right time, because Best seems to break open even the, the positions that look like they're, they're unbreakable. He still somehow manages to just crack it open like a like a, a bad egg almost. But, but hopefully going into set number two here, we're going to go into it with our best minds. I'm super looking forward to this. They're both really uh, talented players in different ways. Mine's very cerebral, whereas Best is like, you know, king of the apes. <laughs> kind of polar opposites here, I guess, but uh, in some ways. Um, Best going to get in here with the gas deal right away, and mine's going to have to handle that, but I don't think that mine will have any trouble here uh, opening up with gasless uh, against Best. He should be able to, you know, get across there, scout, figure out what's going on, find the best way to counter it. Now, I'm wondering if he was going to throw down a second Rax or not, because... Um... Yeah, starting a second barracks and then cancelling it after you confirmed it's not proxy uh, so can be a really good good idea to go for it but it looks like he's just going to be making a wall and just playing like a bunker expandy kind of way 
Yeah, he doesn't believe the best is uh, going to go for that type of play. He's going to see the Zealot here, so he knows exactly what's happening now. First Zealot will be headed across this map, but we're going to have plenty of time to prepare for that. Um, it's it's a quick rush distance uh, on Blitz Y here, going across these uh, the uh, catwalk here, but um, it's still going to take some time because it's not a proxy. He's going to have three Marines out at least. I could bring the SCVs to the ramp and, and just bully this back, and he should be able to get the bunker up here on low ground, no problem. Yeah, and uh, inversely, Best is uh, throwing down his Nexus at 19 just before gas, so going to be trying to optimize his own Nexus timing here after taking the gas, and he knows the CC is going to go down any second now, and he wants to make sure his Nexus is ahead of that. Doesn't want to let him build a command center while his hasn't even started yet. Yeah, that's right. And Best will get that command center, or get that Nexus up, but he's only on one gateway here and mine is about to scout that no he's not allowed to get in so I'm not going to see that it's just one uh, gateway here so he could be expecting you know, double dragoon production to suddenly come out zealot is going to be pushed back here he could have actually jumped on top of those marines uh, as the the vision changed going from low ground to high ground but he instead decides to just keep the health on that zealot. Maybe the right choice here. Heading all the way back home. Mine going to put on the pressure without even seeing the gateway count here. Yeah, I, I like this this call because he can just turn around. Um, he has four marines as well, so he can fight with the high ground against the dragoon if he does shave off enough HP. And he knows that it's probably going to be zealot zealot and if it's zealot zealot then he knows that like these marines can just run away and be safe so he's not really in a major danger here for going for this little pressure play well, there's the factory started up here same time as the robotics facility best gonna be in a little bit of control this game because he forced the opener from mine to be that uh, gasless fast expand but uh, I don't see, you know, a, a huge advantage on either side. Just a slightly faster Nexus. We do have our CC up, though. Uh, we're not going to be able to do a whole bunch of damage to this bunker because the factory is almost done. Is he going to run by with these zealots? That seems a little bit crazy. No, he's going yeah, back he away. Yeah, if there was three, then obviously he'd probably go for that, but he's he's going straight into Dragoons after two, so he, you probably won't run by that in um, most cases. I'm, I'm pretty sure mine's going to five-fact him here. Yeah, the third factory is already going down. I was, just, I was just about to say, as you were talking, I think we're going to see mine go into five-fact here, which will probably line up nicely with what Bess is doing, actually. Do you think this is going to be just five-fact all-in, or is he going to... Uh, five fact and try to take a third because best is well, just so good at breaking positions you need that well, now that well now, well now that best is going for reavers i imagine it's going to be five fact all in and maybe he expands behind it if he needs to but if it wasn't going to be reavers he could just go five fact into third but because it's going to be reavers with one gate then he definitely will probably just commit to the five fact and try and kill best here i imagine it'll all come down to the reaver control then and uh what kind of damage this reaver can do is going to set the the tempo here as the reaver pops out gets sent across the bait uh across the map blitz y very fast rush distance and kind of a difficult base to turret up effectively right there's a lot of open space at the top of this base you can't really cover it all with turrets you have to kind of put the turrets next to the buildings and try to defend with tanks inside the main so we'll have to see if there's any holes in that defense that best can try to exploit here mine usually on top of that type of thing having the the proper defense in position but there's always mistakes that are made there's always holes that can be found that's what uh snow has really taught us this past couple of seasons of uh, just how strong these reavers can be in the early game and i think that best one of those per people who's really internalized those lessons yeah i mean he's not a one-trick pony yes he's really good at just like breaking you open with gateway man but he doesn't need to play that way he's he's a very talented individual he can play pretty much any build it's just that he's got a very specific style that he likes to go for sometimes here though he's definitely wanting to abuse the reavers and slow down the advancement of mind but mine's going to be preempting that and might be going into a five fact here soon or so far i think it's just three factories so he hasn't fully committed to this yet but as soon as he sees the shuttle and reaver i imagine he's going to want to be throwing down additional factories we don't have any turrets yet in the base but this little push across the map is actually going to slow down the shuttle 
which should have been heading towards the, the main base already to put on that pressure. It's got to stay here and try to uh, defend this, this little push forward. Of course, this should get wiped out uh, with the Reaver here. Um, but if he leaves with the Reaver, this little army that doesn't look too powerful could you know, bully back those Dragoons and get a nice position there. So he does need to stay. And this is buying a lot of time here for mine to get those turrets up into position, get mine set up inside his main base, and uh, get this armory out so he can start to pump a few Goliaths as well. Yeah, best sent a probe to his uh, natural third base on the high ground to make it look like he hasn't taken a third in the top left yet, which mine killed that probe, so you might be thinking that there's no third in the top left just yet, so maybe best has kind of tricked mine as well into thinking that this is two base. Well, that third base is coming up here now, and when the probe transfer comes, I think that everything will be revealed because there are some mines set up over there, and there comes the probe transfer. We don't have any vultures nearby, I don't think, to actually try to snipe any of those, but I believe he sees now the probe transfer. He should know about this base. Are we going to set up that five factory here? How many do we have? We've got four. Is that a fifth one being thrown down? I think so. Well, four gives you the option to be aggressive no matter what in this matchup, generally speaking. But yeah, the five factory is like the really committed, like, I want to do something with this kind of way of playing. And we haven't yet seen that, uh, I don't think. Or is that? What? Yeah, I don't think he's built a fifth factory just yet. But maybe he doesn't feel confident with the timings because I guess he didn't see the Reaver for some time. It wasn't like best rushed the Reaver and sent it straight out and used it. So. Maybe he didn't identify that quick enough to want to pull the trigger on that and instead going for a little bit more middle ground build here. Well, no damage on either side. No one's taken a, a big loss uh, in a fight just yet either. So it seems that mine going to tentatively push forward here and take this third base uh, on high ground at the front. Um, the Reaver hasn't been used aggressively at all yet this game, so Best playing very conservatively with that. And 5 Factory going to push forward here. He's not going to take this base, actually. He's going to push right towards the middle. I think he might have just scanned top left and thinking about pushing up towards that location. Yeah, I, 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 I thought... I thought um he was building like a starport or something in the bottom of his base i don't think that was a fifth factory so okay we got five factory after all like we originally thought it's quite a few tanks um i think if if best is gonna let him take this high ground for free it's actually a little bit troublesome for best now oh he's gonna get some probes that's what i'm saying mind it really outmaneuvered best here he's got uh, the high ground now in a great position he went out on the left hand side instead of going across the uh, catwalk there um, into best reaver he went out into the middle of the map making best think he was going to head over towards the top left and then best moved to counter that now he's got this position over the catwalk anyway Zealots are going to run forward here. Zealots coming from behind as well. There's a few mines back here, but this army is huge. Best coming forward with Zealots. Oh, the Dragoon's getting absolutely squashed, though. Great targeting from Mind in this fight, but can he hold the ground here at the top of the catwalk? These Reavers are getting some big shots. He's targeting down the Reavers, but we're running out of gateway units now. Gateway units are very, very low. One more Mind going to be dragged in, but it doesn't explode. Oh my god, he runs in. Oh, he tried to get that Mind to explode on that tank, but Mind just shutting down those Zealots and Dragoons at the very last second. He holds that position. Dude, Best is in so much hurt right now. He's got one Reaver, a few Zealots, and a Dream right now. Can he break this? I don't think so. Mine just going to keep rallying all five factors in this position and slowly close the noose here on best. Yeah, it's just such a powerful setup for the Terran to get here. They could start like creeping forward with some mines, tanks on the ridge, and there's just not really anything you can do. The Terran will eventually squeeze you out of your rally point and cut off your ability to get units out onto the map. It's like best going to try and like sell up bomb onto some of these tanks, hoping to get some good uh, mine drags here. But mine's been doing a good job of killing his own mines, making sure there's not any easy drag options available to 
best after that initial skirmish. And now it's looking very strong. The supplies are looking pretty good for, for Terran, like 97 to 110. Like, this is looking pretty Terran favored. The starport's just now finishing up. It's plus one's finishing. So he'll, he'll get his uh, science facility on the way. Eventually, start going to that 2 1 timing. And he's got quite a few factories on the way. So I think that's six factories at least. Uh, sorry, seven factories uh, pumping out right now. So that's just about enough to keep uh, out muscling Bess for the time being. But I think eventually Bess is going to try and come around and put on some pressure to the rally points of uh, Mind and force him to shuffle down and be a bit more fluid of his setup. Well, he's going to send this very small force of gateway units around the side to try and threaten a counterattack here. And he's actually forced all the uh, vultures to come back, plus a bunch of tanks. So this might be the moment here for Bess to break that containment over his natural. Uh, some DT is going to come out here, try to maybe break this position with a bit of those invisible men. But, you know, we do have uh, two turrets up here on the high ground. It's not like you can easily uh, run up there and just start hitting tanks. And yeah, he gets a pretty decent mind drag there. But oh, the Templar coming out here, going to get sniped to go down immediately. Dude, mind is so good right now. He's just crushing face in both of these matchups versus Protoss and Zerg today. Yeah, this setup at the third's pretty strong as well. If Best tries to hit that, he's not going to be too successful. There's not enough Zealots in there to deal with that. He, even with a good Zealot bomb, I don't think he can break this right now. So I'm a little bit concerned for him. He has got a few Zealots with this army. I mean, with perfect mind drags, maybe it's bustable. But I've re I, every time people say like, oh, there's no way the Pro's player can bust here, and then somehow Best does it. So I don't want to like, say for sure that Best isn't going to break one of these positions. But right now it's looking really good for mind. It looks like really tight yeah mind has that set up that's a lot of tanks being on defense right now though um maybe if best can bring his entire army together he can break this high ground uh and he's brought his army back now he threatened the counterattack, and he's brought his army forward now to actually smash this small tank position at the same time a drop coming into the main looks like best has realized that that's coming though he's pulled most of his probes let's see if he can get the rest of them out of here before he loses them all looks like not gonna happen mine getting a whole bunch of kills here is gonna even pick up his vultures you know set them out uh, inside the main base try to get some mines over here by the gateways possibly uh best just sending a few dragoons back here to deal with this but a lot of chaos going on the map i can't believe he sent that probe transfer across the map during all of this mine didn't catch it though we're gonna be able to saturate a uh, center left somehow during all of this yeah I like how mine's being active with trying to lay down mines in the uh behind enemy lines uh, because uh, he's been seeing a lot of reavers coming out of best so he knows there's not a lot of observers out on the map so laying down mines at this stage of the game is like really powerful because the protoss player isn't actively mine sweeping at the moment so a few mines in it, behind his dragoons could potentially like spell disaster for best and like kill a big chunk of his army before it's even had the chance to get to the front line best somehow staying in this game after taking a lot of damage from that drop and you know being contained for quite some time he's managed to break the containment now and he got the base in the center left up and mining uh which really shouldn't have happened that's such a long rush or such a long probe transfer distance over there to the center left and oh god the reavers are gonna die here though this is <laughs> this is not good for best he's gonna throw down a few last scarabs but this reaver should definitely fall. A good aggressive push here from mine to sh shut that down. Wow, the reaver survives here with six kills and one scarab left. Another drop over here. Big hit there with the tank. Four kills on that already. Really good play here from mine. He's going to kill a ton of this economy that just got up from best. And at the same time, pushing towards this middle. Mine is looking unstoppable. Yeah, he's playing out of his mind right now, pun intended. Currently about even on supply with Best, which is absolutely crazy at 16 minutes, just showing how powerful he is of a player and able to trade with uh, the best of it. And look at this setup right now. Like, Best can't do anything to save 9 o'clock. The best he can hope for is, like, come down for a counterattack at the third base, but... I think there's enough here to like whittle down these zealots where this counterattack won't actually accomplish a lot. Yeah, wow, just going for a massive counterattack, zealot only counterattack. Throwing down Templar on high ground here to try and storm the returning tanks. I kind of like it, but the zealot, the zealots just got massacred here. Um, and now it's just dragoons pouring through this tight choke uh, with tanks spread. 
it's not gonna work well for best he has to back up uh, he lost the base in the center left but we're talking about his kind of lifeline here of you know sending all those probes to center left and uh making that probe transfer happen now actually looks like a bad play because we just lost every single probe at that base best actually 30 supply down undermined Mine just taking complete control here as he spreads out. He's got the high ground in the center left. That high ground is so important on this map. As long as he holds that high ground here, uh, I don't think there's any way that Best can win. He's just going to take half the map now. Uh, the bottom two bases in the in the bottom left there mine gonna have complete domination over that and he doesn't even need to push forward here he doesn't need to do anything except for sit and wait but it looks like he's done waiting he's actually gonna shove forward see if he can break this fourth base and end this game a little bit earlier he's got two one upgrades right now 40 supply advantage a lot of production behind this fourth base also online a lot of resources available for mine to just trade the pieces of the board and simplify the game winning state trying to isolate best from getting any kind of good engagement here gonna very tentatively creep up to this high ground position and try and squeeze best out of the game look at the pre-splitting of the tanks as well just to make sure that the storm trades will pretty much go cost effectively his way no matter what Really nice splitting on the tanks at the front, but the tanks in the back are incredibly stacked up. He's got to spread those out as well. Great EMP here, hitting the entire army. Great value. Not getting rid of any storms there because the Templar were in the shuttle, but taking away all the shields on a ton of these units. And Bess is just not ready. Look at the army that Bess has fielded on the left-hand side. He wants to hit this from two different sides. But the army is so small on the left, and he's sending in this army on the right before the army on the left is even ready. This is not looking good, man. Things are just exploding here for best, and mind is expanding even further. Look, at just it's so small. There's almost nothing here on the left-hand side. How can he attack with this army here? There's really nothing he can do. He's going to run into mines as well. Dude, Best is getting smashed right now. He's going to bring out a few last zealots. A couple of storms here are going to make their way to the front as well. But the split is so good. So well done by Mine. GG is called. Wow. Domination here by Mine thus far. The Protoss lineup was looking fantastic when we started this video. But dude, Mind is looking godlike here in this series. Ma Unironically, that's like a masterclass in how to close out a game as Terran. Like, really stellar stuff there from Mines. Like, so patient and so composed from start to finish. Like, really stellar stuff all around. Like, if you want to learn how to play Terran, like, start studying guys like this, because it's really going to help you out. Well, I'm, I'm kind of excited that Terran's already got a win under their belt, because that's going to make a best of seem a little bit less potent in this game. Number three coming up. Sending out Zealot here to take on Mind. I don't know if this is the right call, man. Zealot, I definitely think he is uh, capable of taking down anybody on a on a good day or uh, with the right strategy. But mine here is just looking unbeatable. I guess they wanted to have effort in the back. I want to save him for last. But um, on Apocalypse, what do you think Zealot's going to pull out here? What's that build? What's the special sauce? that Zealot's going to pull out to, <laughs> to take down mine. Well, there's so many things that he can do, but it's going to be dependent on what he scouts as well. He he might have something already pre-planned, but it depends on how mind if mind like, say, walls in the natural choke or doesn't and what have you. So there's a few things to consider, but I, I would, uh, yeah, I'd quickly respectfully disagree. Zealot is the right choice here. We need to save effort for a Protoss. Like, he's a ZVP specialist, and Zealot's a ZVT specialist. This is exactly the way around you want to put these two players out. Um, it does make total sense. Uh, but yeah, I don't know the exact kind of uh, special source we might see here. It could be two hatched lurker, could be like a 12 lurker bust into three hatched mutant all in, which was he'll, he'll contain him with like five lurkers and then go up to 12 lurkers, run in with 12 lurkers and links to try and break the bunkers and try and kill mine that way. It can be good against a wall as well. It's harder to build those like five bunkers necessary to hold an attack like that. Um, but it's Zelot, so he could do literally anything under the sun. There's literally 50 builds that he knows how to do in this situation right now it's crazy how good this guy is there's literally like 50 different cheeses he could do
Well, he's going to start with a very early gas here. It's definitely one of those 50 cheese builds that you were mentioning. Um, the hatchery, he's going to see how late this is. And mine knows what kind of game he's in for now. It's going to be something wild with a very, very quick either zergling speed or lair. He gets in here, he sees uh, that the lair hasn't been built yet. He's going to want to keep that SCV alive and in the main for as long as possible. Figure out what is coming here from Zealot. It's a difficult uh, task to really figure out what this guy is doing, but two hatch meat all in. You're going to call it right now? All right. Yeah. We've got the layer coming. Uh, it's looking like a very fast mutalist build. So two hatch meat does make sense here. Four lings only being produced right now. We'll have to see mind putting down extremely fast turrets. Like you need the turrets started before five minutes, I think, here. Yeah, the, the, the layer is starting approximately about 20, 22 seconds quicker, which means the muters are getting their 20, 22 seconds quicker. So if your turrets are on time as normal, then they're 20 seconds too slow now. So yeah, you're in big trouble if you don't get your timings adjusted. Yeah, he's going to have to uh, have those turrets up and ready at about the 5 minute 30 mark if he wants to be safe here. And he's going to have very few Marines. It's a tempo play here from Zealot. And it doesn't have to end with just the, the Muta all in, right? He can kind of manipulate this into a, a Guardian play as well, if I'm, yes. I'm correct Hydra about Guardian. that. Hydra yes, Guardian. He can do, yeah, he can do that. But but with the very fast... If he was going to do Hydra Guardian, he probably would have done Link Speed into Lair and did a bit of pressure build. But because he saw the wall in from Mind, he probably thought there's no point even going for Link Speed here. So I'm just going to do the all-in Muta variant. Right, so if Mind gets those turrets up in time and really over-defends with turrets, maybe he can still switch it into uh, a Guardian play. But yeah, going to start to pump out those Mutas and he will not stop if Mind doesn't defend properly if he doesn't defend perfectly here uh, he will break open a position and just abuse it until the end of time now scv gonna make its way back into the main base it's gonna see everything you'll see the timing of the spire and there's really nothing that zealot can do about it right now zealot just keeping his lings out in the front making sure that no naked marines are making their way out to to pressure him here um did he yeah he went for a uh, two racks uh, academy rush here so he wants to put on a little pressure maybe try to force zealot to make a sunken he does force the sunken out yeah. that's really all he needs to do here uh it'll, it'll probably be prudent for mine to turn around and go back home at this point because he doesn't want to lose any of these marines forcing the sunken is enough it's going to slow down those mutilists uh and just any anything you can do to slow down the mutilists at all is going to be big here uh, zealot's mineral boosting is just absolutely insane his optimization is crazy like there's no no other zerg player probably watching this right now that would be able to have the amount of stuff that he's got right now like the fact that he could even afford this sunken colony mm -hmm. and still get these muters on time is absolutely bananas i can't even begin to explain well, he's able to pump out five mutas. He was looking for the full six, but you'll have to wait a moment here. The turrets are perfectly timed. This is absolute perfection for mind as well. Uh, he's going to have the bunker here at the front. Uh, he will probably lose this turret, but he doesn't even lose the SCV. Can just start another turret here just to the side. Um, we've got the Marines all the way back home now with the stim. Range will be on the way as well. Triple barracks. Just perfect. He just needs a few more turrets and he needs to keep building turrets. He's already got three though in the main, which is uh, absolutely all you need right now. Just adding on more and more turrets as time goes on. But Zealot is looking for that position to break. It looks like he wants to go for the main base. This is a little bit surprising yeah. since there are three turrets here. The repair comes down, but it's not enough. He picks off one turret. Doesn't lose a muta just yet, although one of them is badly damaged. Well, with eight muters, it's three shot volley with no repair, but with a repair, it's four, four shot. That's why he saw that he needed another shot to finish that off. Uh, does get the stim on those marines who are coming over the bus, but he is going to be losing this bunker, so a little bit unfortunate here for mine. Like, Zealot is very slowly starting to crack open the egg, and he wants to get to that gooey goodness inside, and mine doesn't want to just give up his protein for free like that, so he's going to do everything he can. He certainly will have a better chance of it than someone like mine. So mine's uh, going to be able to handle himself 
a, a lot better than some Terrans will, but very crucial here for mine that he had those two turrets set up in that main base for that timing where the Sever Mute had swung back around, because with only one turret there, he can kill approximately like four or five SCVs for free, even while taking the shots from the one turret. Right. Just adding on the perfect number of turrets thus far. Mind holding off. But is he going to actually move out right now? I, I feel like uh, with this type of play coming from Zealot, if you really want to be out on the map, if you lose this Marine Force, uh, things are going to get really hard for you back in the main base. And Zealot is doing nothing but making mutas oh, wow. right now. He's going to come through, yeah. try to pick off a few more of these Marines before he dives in fully. But he is is no doubt going to dive on this and just kill everything. Another stim forced out. More mutas being rallied forward. This is getting scary for Mind. Mind is like trying to play life on hard mode right now. And he just wants to like join these two forces together right before he goes for this kind of dive. But Zealot's done this situation like thousands of times. Zealot's like one of the best in the business at this kind of uh, strategy. So unfortunately for Mind, like Zealot's got the timings down to a T. Like he'll never let you join those two bioballs up. And as soon as you go for it, it's just going to pounce on you at the perfect time. So unfortunately for Mind, he's like kind of gambling on a, a, a little bit of a, a catch on the mutas with the joining of the forces and wasn't able to get it really crazy for him to even go for a, a type of play like that in this situation just better to add on turrets non-stop and maintain your bio force but now he's added to the main base getting a few of these SCV kills forcing so many turrets out of mind and mine's right for making that many turrets you basically have like non-stop turret production like basically one SCV making a turret at all three locations simultaneously yeah he's doing that but uh, can Zealot break through any of these spots? He's not making that transition we were talking about earlier with the Guardian play. Uh, there's no Hive, there's no uh, even Queen's Nest, so he really does need to break a position. Even though Mine's lost all of his bio, he's still got four racks here and constant turret production. God, it's so hard to to run by all these turrets right now, but he does stop the, the one uh, starport here and the armory is on the way. But the, the win condition that Zealot's setting up is the Ling stab in the natural while the mutas control the zone, preventing the marines to go into the natural. So if the bunker's down in the natural, Lings can come in and kill the turrets for free. And that's the setup that Zealot's going for here. So he's trying to pick up all the bio units and the Lings are going to come into the natural and clean up these turrets while, and the marines won't be able to get outside again. And the Lynx are starting to pile up here. The armory being denied for a little bit of time here with the SCV going down. He will restart that in a moment. But yeah, like you said, he's been picking off Marines over and over again. The bunker is there, but it's in kind of a precarious situa position and it doesn't have anything inside of it. He's going after yeah. the Marines. He's going to get uh, all these uh, Marines here and the bunker is going to go down. Ooh, doesn't kill off any of those medics, even though he's got a full stack of uh, mutas. A little bit unfortunate on the targeting there, but... Marines are going to try to run in here, get next to the turrets and stop these from going down to the links. And while that stab didn't really work out for Zealot, he's starting to open up these positions. Yeah, he's, he's Zell's pretty much doing everything you need to as like a contingency plan. Now he's going to swing back round to the main, get these three turrets as, as quickly as he can. There shouldn't be enough bio units here to prevent this from happening, but he's getting really quick repairs on this third turret, though. So really great response from Mind here to save that last turret. Now the Valkyrie's out. Now there's a much more game-winning state here for Mind, but the Ling's coming back round into his natural expansion and frustrating this position, opening it up for SCV harassment. With the Valkyries online, if he gets two of these Valkyries about Scourge coming in to snipe them, he's going to be in a great game state. The only way he could lose the game right now is if one or two of these Valkyries get sniped by a pair of Scourge soon. All the links have been cleaned up in the natural and I think things are starting to fall apart here for Zealot. He has been putting on this pressure consistently throughout this game but as the Valkyries get here they are the real counter to this mass mutilist play and as every single volley here just lowers that HP further and further, makes it harder and harder to dive. It makes it harder and harder to do anything uh, with the force that Zealot's put together. And he just doesn't have anything behind this. He does get one snipe. Hey, one snipe on a Valkyrie. And he gets a volley there as well. But look at how low these are and how few Mutalists are left at this point. It's it's not looking yeah, good. Yeah, don't, don't count Zealot out but at the moment. The main is actually very exposed for the Terran player. And it's only one Valkyrie, so he can still just, just crush mine in a moment if mine makes one small mistake he needs to make sure he doesn't lose uh, any more of these valkyries are free although zealot doesn't have a pair of scourge here so he's trying to guarantee he's trying to bank on killing this valkyrie with volleys but he's not able to do so just yet he will catch maybe this valkyrie just barely but he's lost all his mutas so gg finally going to be called mind 
putting a stop to the potential threat of Zealot right out of the gate and looking like he's going to be carrying the Terran team here. Always an exciting game when it's Zealot playing against the Terran, but Mind had his number there, um, just continuously building turrets as you should. I think the move out with the Marines was a little bit crazy for Mind. A little bit crazy. Uh, but other than that, man, he just kept the defenses coming and he knew his win condition. He needed to get those Valkyries out and just keep control of the natural and the main. Uh, and with those turrets, keep the links out of the natural as well. He just handles everything perfectly. And now we've got a Terran player on a roll here. Mind just cleaning up everybody. Can anyone stop him? It's either Bisu or Snow is going to be sent out next. I imagine it'll be Snow. But let's see who they want to send out. That's coming right up. And there it is. Snow going to be sent out here versus Mine. Dark Origin, a tough map for Terran. Can Mine continue his spree here? He's so close to an alt kill. We haven't seen one yet this season. Just needs to get through snow. Or we have we have seen it this season. We haven't seen it for a few weeks yet. And that right, all right. kill prize has been growing. Yeah, I mean that, that roll on effect. Uh rollover is gonna be uh, stacking up, stacking up, and sooner or later these players are gonna be claiming that nice big tasty purse. Don't think we're gonna be seeing any tasty treats though. I don't see any meat in the uh the intro here, so I don't think I'm going to be getting beef for winning these games, unfortunately. It's a little bit of a sad uh, sponsorship type deal, but nonetheless, going to be going into this game here with, I think, Snow probably going to be easily taking this game. And I think it was such a good idea sending out Snow here because you want to keep Beast in reserve for effort. Snow was also slightly improved in his PVZ, so maybe has a chance at beating effort after taking out Mind here, and then could probably also beat either Royal or Barracks in there, so could turn things around for Protoss quite quickly here, could Snow. Well, looks like Snow going to steal this gas, and we saw this earlier versus Best. Mind definitely comfortable you know, going into a, a game without having that early gas, just getting his bunker down and dealing with whatever pressure comes out of the Protoss. But uh, Pr Protoss pressure from Snow, it hits a little bit different when it comes to... Uh, you know, Snow and Bast. Um, Snow already getting way more damage on this early SCV, mm. trying to build the bunker and or build the barracks, excuse me. And he might actually get this. It's getting very low. Three more hits. And he's going to be able to pick that off. Um, mine desperately trying to get this uh, SCV to repair. But man, this was really, really close here. He's still going after it. Going to try and finish it off here. Bringing out another SCV to try and keep that alive. Got to be careful with that first probe. He could end up losing it, but he pulls it away now. Going to start to repair those shields. The first sell it coming across the map now. That's a lot of lost mining time. I mean, on an average, you're, you're mining about 60 minerals a minute with these SCVs, depending on what patch you're mining and what have you and what saturation. But that's a lot of lost mining time for mine. Having two extra SCVs committed to trying to stop that while chasing the probe, one to repair. And that's a lot of lost mining time. And now he's not going to be uh, optimized in taking this uh, command center after doing this like bunker expand adjustment, dealing with the gas. He's got three dealing with that gas deal to try and put on some damage to help those Marines kill it off so we can not be too far behind on his timings but still that's a really great opening from snow and it's going to really make it comfortable for him going in this uh, game with not only an advantage in his economy but uh, also being able to abuse this map a little bit being such a pro's favorite map well snow doing exactly the same thing as best right gets a second zealot throws down the nexus um gets his gas afterwards so Things are looking really, really similar to the previous game. Just slightly uh, slower times here for mine because he was slowed down just tiny, tiny bits, but not by much, right? We've already got the CC on the way. Uh, things, things are looking like almost exactly the same as that Blitz Y game. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that mind could surprise us in this game. Like, I think even though like everything in my body is telling me that Snow's going to win this game, I think mine could still surprise like both you and me and also viewers at home here because he's a very talented individual with probably 
He's almost rivaling Flash in terms of how he understands the game and how he's able to think about the game state and how to strategize given any given game state. You know what I mean? Like, if he, if he had the mechanics of Flash, he would be on par with Flash almost. I agree. I agree. He he definitely has that understanding, but he doesn't seem to uh, realize that this is possible. He hasn't sent anything back here to you know build a supply depot or something and. We're going to have two zealots uh, thrown over this wall. Oh, can he actually get it? Oh, really, really close there. Going to try one more time. He's sending the first zealot in immediately. Second zealot is going to hop over. There it is. He gets both zealots inside. This is going to present a serious problem for mine. He's trying to get his factories out right now, but he's got to deal with all these zealots running in. And uh, We're going to have two zealots in the main and a third zealot running into the natural at the same time. Yeah, one more time, gonna pay off like that song. One more time, and also gonna be delaying this factory with that zealot, punishing it, trying to get it off with these side blades from getting this factory built so we can start getting the vultures out. And there's just barely enough marines to deal with this, but he, he hasn't got anything in the bunker, so more zealots can join this force from the front now. And with three zealots, he's gonna distract in the main while two start to hit the natural. And again, slowing down that, uh, the, the economy here of mine, just any SUVs pulled or lost right now is just lost potential of economy and that's going to slow down mine's potential infrastructure that he needs to combat someone of uh, someone of snow's like caliber in the mid game phase when he's going to be doing all kinds of reaver shenanigans and other optimization plays oh god this is getting really messy right now nice pull, pull with the SEVs. oh a great surround <gasps> wow what a beautiful surround he even, like, sent, he even sends the SUVs back to mine at the perfect time so he could still kill the Zealot with the Marines without taking any damage just to get a little bit more minerals going because he knows just how far behind the curve he is on that economy state. So that has two Marines or three Marines in this bunker as well. So not going to be able to get round with this Dragoon. Like Snow was trying to be really cheeky there, I think, and was trying to be a little bit sneaky and I only thought there was going to be one Marine in that bunker but got punished for that. Yeah, this... Uh... <laughs> this Dragoon running by was pretty hilarious. He lost tons of uh, shield hit points on that. Uh, or tons tons of regular hit points on that, excuse me. And now the Marine count is really high. We're going to have a couple of uh, tanks pushing out here. All the Zealots are dead, and the Dragoons are low. Mind really flipping the script here on Snow now. And Snow's going to be on the back foot for quite a while. He's got two Dragoon production right now. He's got two gateways to work with. But there's two factories here pumping out tanks. I think once he gets three or four tanks, he's just going to go. An armory it's coming up as well. Push, I think. Yeah, I think it's a three tank push. It makes sense for him to go. Now, he has enough Marines to soak shots. So like each Marine is like taking four Dragoon phase disruptor shots. So that's a lot of tankiness with tanks behind that to give a lot of beefiness and a high DPS output. There's 30 damage on each of those arc light cannons on those tanks. There's a really high DPS coming out of these siege tanks with the Marines soaking up damage on the front line. There's so much damage potential in this army. It's insane. Well, he needs to put on this pressure right now because he doesn't have an eBay back at home. He doesn't have any turrets. It's the first reaver is going to come out here. It's going to land. Get a big shot on a bunch of these marines. And dude. Okay. Oh, he tries to run by, but not going to get through. Great block there from Snow. Handling this basically perfect. Yeah, this is flawless execution from Snow. The only thing that went wrong there was like sucking up that mine hit on that Dragoon and softened up a little bit. But everything is going Snow's way right now. Has the tools at oh! its disposal. Tries to get a beautiful mine drag of the Zealot. Gonna be doing a huge set nation. And the Scarab finishing off that tank mine, the tank marine combo as well. Wow, he's getting a combo meal for, for he, he's just so good at being cost efficient. It's crazy how much value he gets out of these individual reavers. There's a 200 mineral, 100 gas unit that feels like it should cost at least 300, 300 in the hand of this guy yeah absolutely definitely, definitely way more value than a 200 to or 200 100 he's gonna drop it here in the mineral line as well get a big shot off Ooh, great pull back though gonna keep all of those uh scvs alive can he kill this damn shuttle dude this thing is just dancing around inside the main fancy footwork from snow always beautiful to watch but He's going to continue to get damage here with this extremely low health Reaver. He's going to pick that up one last time. He even gets the tank. Are you kidding me right now? That shuttle is still alive. Going to pull this man apart like, uh, like, what was his name? Was it Barracks? I can't even remember. Dude. 
How many kills is this gonna get? I think he can drop one more time, or he could just fly out. Either one. One more, one more shot. Oh. <sighs> Reaver finally does go down. Dude. This is crazy. Wow. How the hell? Oh, he's just gonna tap out. Dude! How <laughs> can you blame him, honestly, after that display? 200 minerals, 100 guests, by the way, guys. What do we What do we even say about that game, man? Oh my god, as a caster, it's tough. To just watch Snow bust apart Terran players with a single Reaver over and over and over again, man. <laughs> It's crazy. I mean, can you get a balance patch out on Reavers? <laughs> like, just like nerf only snow, though. Like, only only when snow's playing does it have the nerf. You know what I mean? Oh, it's crazy. It is crazy. Um, nuts, dude. Gnarly. The consistency is just it's, right. it's wild. It's really wild. Right. It's not just one game or uh, one game every once in a while that Snow's able to pull a Terran apart with these Reavers, but it's almost every game. He always gets that damage. He's and more consistent with his Reaver control than Zergs are with their Muta control, which should tell you a lot, because these Zerg players invest a lot of hours in dedicated practice purely on Muta Micro. So for him to be that good with Reavers is like kind of unworldly. Yeah, that's a great comparison actually the zerg players just dedicating hundreds of hours to getting that perfect control uh to get huge huge value out of those units and i think snow's done a similar thing do we have a protoss player with dedication dude that's that's a scary thing that's a scary thought it's, these protoss players are going to start realizing that if you actually focus on being good at the game that you can be even better than you are now like that's a crazy thought right they're gonna stop driving their bugattis and start winning tournaments man it's coming soon oh, man i'm scared now like i'm gonna actually have to put in some effort into my zvp again <laughs> well once again um, oh wait, we do have the opportunity to uh, all kill. Snow could all kill Terran here. Let's see if he manages to make it happen. I'm gonna jump into that next game. Effort finally gonna hit the map here. He's gonna hit the, the big stage once again. Man, I'd love to see Effort in the ASL again. He busted out this season because of his wrist, but as you can see, he's made a bit of a recovery let's see what he can pull out here after taking some time off after you know relaxing his wrist and uh, you know hopefully doing some good stretches hopefully he's got a good stretching routine in i know i've got one even though i'm at my level with a very low apm uh, this guy hitting almost 500 you gotta have those stretches in and i'm glad that he's on the road to recovery here we might see him in the next season we're getting the pleasure of seeing him here in the KCM, and I couldn't be more excited about it. Yeah, he's just charging his lasers right now. This guy plays of an average of about 400 APM, but he's usually at around 500 at a lot of phases of the game. It's insane. Like sometimes you'll be 18 minutes into a Zerg versus Protoss game, and you think, oh, okay, he's not spamming anymore. He's just going to be a bit more chill with his APM. No, 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 still like 450, 500. Crazy. No wonder why his wrists hurt. Yeah, no wonder. No wonder. I'm surprised more of these uh, players don't actually have wrist injuries, but um, if you've got a good stretching routine and you're really consistent about it, I think you can avoid most of those problems. I hope that more players uh, get on that um, physiotherapy. Of course, it's just it's just part of the um, the paradigm of being a gamer, though, of being a streamer, is that you don't really take care of your body. Am I right? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of weird as well when you think about it, right? Like the most important thing to you as this like pro gamer is your hands. So mm -hmm. you'd think that you would put a little bit more of like time, energy, and effort into you know your your health in, as far as your hands are concerned. But you, you put like hundreds of thousands of hours into your practice, but you don't put one hour into your like routine of like taking care of yourself like it seems a little bit strange but um yeah maybe more players were more aware of that or just maybe had the resources and the knowledge because maybe it's just a little bit of a lack of knowledge there it's only recently that people started to realize just how important it is to sit like flush with your desk with your arm rests you know in line of your desk to prevent shoulder wrist and arm injuries and what have you we're in the era of uh esport where kind of like in real sports all the the players you know way back in the day were just like 
overweight and they didn't look, you know, really like they were taking care of their bodies. You know, if you watch football players from like the, the, the 50s or the 40s, you know, yeah, baseball players, they were in terrible health because they just didn't have that knowledge and um, they didn't, can you know, consider uh, the, the ramifications on their play. They were just kind of spitballing it the whole time. And that's kind of where we're at now with eSport, but... Uh, you know, eventually things will round out. I think eventually those uh, finer uh, skills, the, the the taking care of yourself will eventually come into play. Oh, he's going to get the Zealot. All right, on the map, the Zealot goes down. Um, there's still the probe out here that can get in with the scout. And he's done a lot of damage to this pylon uh, as we were rambling on there. Um, he just about gets that, but Snow is being forced out here. He's only got one Zealot. Uh, he doesn't have he's the Zealot for the them. wall. Yeah, he, no, he's got the probe for the wall, so he can just quickly plug this. He'll be okay, but he needs to be careful. Like, one small misstep, and effort will punish you. But so far, Snow is, like, you know, dotting his eyes, crossing his T's, not, like, you know, really stepping out of line anytime. But we'll get a little bit more damage on that pylon, just tickling it, just kind of teasing him a little bit, showing that, you know, you have to respect me. So you have to respect me. And uh, he doesn't know quite if there's more Lings coming here or drones behind this. So this could be a Ling flood where he just pressures the front and kills him, or we could be droning hard behind this. So Snow's kind of having gonna hedge his bets a little bit and kind of like you know walk the middle ground like make keep making zealots make a cannon not really take any too big risky plays here he doesn't be super greedy in the situation he wants to respect the possibility of links just flooding into him here yeah this is what you can do with the overpool build when you're uh, able to produce links this early you can overwhelm the early zealots from the gateway first and really put the uh, protest player on the back foot you have to be very very careful with how you maneuver them then Effort's done a beautiful job of, you know, fancy feet in the natural there, keeping away from the, the Zealots, you know, playing that game of a ring around the rosy there. Now the Zealots are moving out, though. That is quite a few. Run by, maybe? No, he's not going to run by here. That's five Zealots. That's got to be respected here. How many Lings are going to pop out? And will they turn around and head back home? Will the Zealots make it back to the wall uh, in time? He looks like he's just going to turn around and walk back. Perfectly done Snow. here by Snow. Great play by Snow. I'm really impressed with Snow this game thus far. He's shown like he's shown a much higher class of caliber in his ZVP lately. And uh, needs to be careful not to let the Zealot get caught for free here. He's doing a good job of keeping his Zealots together. Not yet. So not going to be getting one of these Zealots caught. That'd be a nightmare situation to lose one or two Zealots for free. Because you just do not have the kind of potency to start getting the Hydra trades later on and as soon as they start to have more Hydras than, than your Zealots can handle it just spirals out of control with that critical mass of Hydras overwhelming you so it needs to be very careful not to lose anything for free against a player of uh, Effort's caliber he's going to be making so many units in this game he's an absolute monster of a macro player absolutely and he already made a bunch of units here that's actually going to be hurting his drone count being forced to make those links I mean you have to respect it you absolutely have to respect the five zealot attack but um you know he, he's he's been limited here he's been slowed down he's got a whole bunch of links that he doesn't really need right now and plus one is going to finish soon those zealots are going to rip those links apart no problem when the time comes um zealot speed is about to finish as well here uh, with that plus one uh, snow starting to push out now and i mean he can easily fight this what does effort have back at home to deal with it is he going to go for the five meter play it's kind of looking like it but he has that hydralis den done i don't see any hydras out is snow just going to bowl him over i don't think so what is going to pop out of these eggs here to save effort it, I mean, he's going to basically uh, rely on his Zerglings to keep control of the game state for now. But what we're basically seeing is a big skirmish mini game to prevent the sixth hatchery being able to go down easily. So Effort wants to be really optimal and put down a sixth hatchery as fast as possible in this situation. But we're putting a lot of pressure onto the Zerg player and basically making him unable to go for that kind of greedy play. So we're forcing him to make muters early. We're trying to put pressure onto the den to make it look like we can kill that. It's a possibility we kill the hydrogen in this situation. But actually, um, Effort. 
Moffat's on top of everything right now. He's cleaned up this Zealot Force pretty efficiently. He may get one or two drones in the main if he's not careful, um, but it looks like he's on top of pulling those drones. It might get one drone, actually. If he gets a second drone, it's not bad, but it won't be getting that. does get the second drone in the natural, though, with a slow HP Zealot instead for compensation. Might get a third, not quite. But yeah, so far, really good slowdown from Snow. He just needs to put on enough pressure that he can't just go straight into a very strong six-hatch Hydra timing, just so we can slow down the Zerg enough so he doesn't have this critical mess in the mid-game phase. Well done by him. Still no third hatchery here over at the third base. So still sitting on five hatch Hydra. Going to start to pump those Hydras out and get those upgrades rolling. Uh, definitely has the money to throw down the, the six hatch, but hasn't decided to yet. No third gas either. So maybe a slight error there. Don't you want a six hatchery if you don't have this third gas? I mean, yeah, you could go into it. Oh, go ahead. It's it's, cause it's the lack of the scouting information. Like he's only just now confirmed what Snow's even doing with this Muta Scourge for. So now he can know to throw down the sixth hatchery, but he didn't have that confirmation that he was good to go with that yet. You know what I mean? So he was kind of like hedging his bets a little bit, keeping open the options to maybe go Ogre Zerg or what have you. And, and in this situation, he understands that, okay, now I can just go six hatch Hydra because you're doing a very standard like Zelot Sarah kind of timing. But he didn't have any way of knowing that until this stage with the Muas and Scourge going in and confirming that. So he sees everything he gets maybe one or two probes there we didn't get it fully on screen but corsair number is too much to handle just the two scourge to push those away in case they decided to to chase and try to get that moving shot um but he can't really get too much damage here with these mutas he's gonna threaten if the corsairs were for example to to suddenly uh, arrive here at the natural or the third base to start to put on that pressure then the mutas could have free reign to dive in and start to kill some probes but he's waiting for that opportunity as the dt crosses the map we're gonna have to see overlord speed coming out here pretty soon and there it is he's gonna start to push that back time for effort to try and take this fourth base uh, this is going to be the point of contention on the map i believe with snow getting up into a big dragoon army and trying to break this spot right here yes dragoons are basically like siege tanks uh, in this matchup so they're, except they're much more mobile so you, if you can get a critical mass of dragoons it's a nightmare situation once you're on top of the zerg production but effort's got such strong macro that he might not let snow ever get to that phase he just will have such a huge amount of um, hydro disc that he will never be able to get that critical mass of dragoons that he needs to overwhelm um, effort but he has supply blocked him temporarily has to slow down the production just a little bit if he can keep effort busy long enough maybe he can still make something happen here the effort is one of the best in the business at this stage of the game macroing like an absolute madman going into a super late game strong zerg setup where he's like got 10 hatcheries hive and everything going his way and uh it could, we could see that kind of game here where it's like a really slow methodical Zerg versus Protoss where he's just like out maneuvering snow and trying to set up for a stronger and stronger macro position. Dude, effort is macroing so good here. It's 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 kind of crazy. He's even on supply. He's got his army in position everywhere. It's like he never took a, a break, man. He, he took a long break here uh, to, to re rest his wrist, but it's he's just looking so on top of everything. Looks like he's going to trap some of these zealots here. Uh, Zealot's making their way into the natural, but he can always pull the drones back to defend this. The Hydral Stand might end up going down, so that could be a significant bump in the, the road here for Effort, trying to put out as many Hydras as he can right now to, to actually keep this, uh, this macro cycle, cycle rolling. He does put, pump out a bunch of Hydras before that dies, and he starts a Hydra Den in the main. It's not a building that takes a long time to produce, so... Oh god, the Zealot's making their way into the third Ooh, nice. base, fourth base as well. At the same time, he brought everything back to try and defend. And, you know, Snow is actually getting on top of this. He might be killing this hatchery. Dude, he gets the hatch. Effort suddenly, in a flurry of activity, loses his advantage here. And now Snow in a great position. This is exactly how you overwhelm people in StarCraft. Eventually, it always comes down to forcing interactions with your opponent. You force enough interactions that even the 480 APM of effort wasn't enough to keep up with everything going on. And after pulling the army out of positions and natural expansion, just getting the snipe on that fourth base is really going to slow down the infrastructure of effort. Still not out of the woods yet. Is Snow still going to have to deal with a, a strong macro Zerg going into it? But has slowed down uh, effort from taking a very easy lead here. Yeah, he might have actually forced a 
cancel on the um, worker upgrade as well, which could be huge. We don't have like a meter right. swell, but we might have to see one from effort. If that lurker upgrade just got canceled, uh, he doesn't have enough time to research that again before the push comes here from Snow. So he might have to go for like a, a big meter swell, even though there's all these Corsairs out. Try to snipe some Templars so that he can hold this uh, this middle ground, this this fourth base here. Uh, because without some sort of, you know, answer, uh, just pure Hydra is not going to be able to beat this. Oh, the storm on the right hand side, absolutely crushing there. Dude, Effort just lost so many Hydras, and this army's coming across the map. We don't have an answer. Lurkers are being made now, but they're a little bit late. I don't know if he's going to be able to hold on. Snow is hitting such a crisp little timing here. He's fighting from the high ground, but Snow is coming in right away. He's not going to wait here. He's going to get some great storms. Pretty good pre-splitting from Effort, but... Okay, great dodge there, but Snow has found himself in a really good spot. Yeah, this is really crazy for Snow right now. Probably the best case scenario he could have hoped for. He's in a little bit of a kill box situation, but there's not enough units on these two flanks to punish this, this Dragoon setup here. And now he's got the critical mass of the, like a siege tank line that he needs, like we were talking about earlier, to really start to overwhelm the Zerg production. Like, there's no way that the Hydras can get a critical mass anymore. Like, these Zerg, these, these Protoss units would just, like, skirmish down the Zerg until the end of time and eventually start killing the hatchery killing the drones mining and just squeeze the zerg out of the game and if you're able to kill the units as they're coming out of the hatcheries there's just no way you can really deal with this as a look at this streamline of units coming in from snow just full on macro uh, just powering behind this to overwhelm the zerg at all costs here so damn dude snow is just so freaking good and showing off his protoss versus zerg uh, chops here in this game as well Getting in there, killing some more overlords. He's actually supply blocked, even though he just lost basically all of his units. His entire army went down, all of those lurkers. You'd think he'd have some open supply, but Snow killing off a bunch of overlords during that. And now he's going to push forward here for the final blow. Really not much that Effort can do. He's sending out a ton of units from his third base to try and reinforce his position, but we're about to see snow crush this spot and kcm is mentioning it now the all kill is on the table here after taking out uh effort the last yeah. zerg player i mean all he's got to do is take out two more terrans it's not a lot of not a lot to ask here for snow and he could get that two million one prize royal gonna be sent out here wow barracks gonna be in the background maybe royal likes this map he wants he wants to play here on radion so taking the helm a little bit early let's try and shut down snow um snow just on another level dude we we're just talking about that game versus effort a moment ago uh, during the break and uh, how effort was looking so incredibly good until Snow pulled the trigger and just started to hammer him in all different directions, sniping that Hydra Den and just pulling apart such an accomplished player. I mean, maybe it's effort, you know, shaking off some of the rust, but at the same time, I really think that that shows how great Snow is in that matchup now and how much he's uh, grown. Uh, in PVZ in general. He, he now has the understanding. He just needs the comprehension to play like that like more consistently. And if he does start playing like that more consistently, we're going to have a Protoss flash in our hands and everyone's going to be bricking it, Sam. Yeah, that's... Uh... That's not a world I want to live in, man. <laughs> With the Protoss flash. That's, um... I mean... It's exciting, but imagine, you know, Snow goes on a 4-5 ASL win spree. It's it's going to get a little get a, get a little crazy. Maybe, hey, maybe we'll get some better maps for Zerg and, and Terran at that point. Yeah, I mean, maybe finally we'll start to see the Protoss map makers having to learn a little bit more about the game to figure out how to make maps a little bit more different on the balance scale. That's just a little... I just want to say something to, like, make the Terrans at home feel vindicated. Yeah, so we welcome our new overlord, the the Protoss, uh, <laughs> the Protoss Flash, um, yeah, and we an hope that evil. we hope that it will uh, result in many great maps for Zerg and Terran. Uh, yep, yep, <laughs> here, yep. here with cross map, um, we're not going to see Snow take a, a very quick expansion, and Royal's not going to go for you know a gasless fast or anything either. He's just going to 
set up a nice little wall here with his barrack supply and factory and start that production nice and early. One SUV on the gas means a very quick command center after this first factory and probably a vulture expand off of this. What do you think? Yeah, uh, with, with the one on gas also makes me think of a fairly quick uh, machine shop with mines as well, mm. following that on. You can take all three off, but leaving one on gas does indicate that you want to make a machine shop and mines. Or something we'll probably, like that. Yeah, we'll probably see like one vulture, maybe two vultures, and then uh, right, switch up. Right. Oh, is he actually going to get this? Oh, he might. He's lined really up. really close. Yeah, Royal's really good though. Royal will have, do his best to try and mitigate that, but yeah, Snow's also extremely good. So, oh, does get the exit turnaround though. Look at that, breaking Snow's ankles a little bit there with that turnaround. And there is a way that if this was on just one move command and snow like glided across the hex grid perfectly and there were some like doodads in the way and what have you and the SUV had to do a little bit of like you know zigzagging then then maybe you could catch up to this SUV but as it stands the probe will never catch it and uh, the dragoon also should not get there in time crazy that he's still trying it he almost runs headlong into the marines here but he does turn around at the last moment Vulture is out. Looks like he's going to just go single Vulture here into a machine shop. And getting the Marines to deal a little extra damage to that uh, Dragoon. The Vulture gets one shot to shave off a bit of those shields as well. He's pretending to head out here on the right-hand side. Baiting the Dragoon over to the right-hand side and now hitting, uh, sending out this Vulture on the left. Really good mind games here from Royal so far. Yeah, um, Royal always impresses me. Like he, he's one of the players where even though you expect him to perform well, like he'll still sometimes still surprise you. He's kind of like hero in that regard for me. He's like he's my Terran hero, if I would say. Yeah, he's uh, not quite as accomplished as hero, I, I guess. But um, he's he hasn't been around as long either, right? Right. He's yeah, he's not been around as long. Um, still on the come up still making moves and here he's going to be going for a drop to try and throw a wrench into the plans of snow he's not going to be uh, confident or uh, happy to just sit back and wait for snow to come to him and try to figure out you know what snow's going to bring and of course it's going to be that reaver and, and just try to shut that down instead he's going to go for a drop try to get in there with the vultures try to mess up snow's plans and probably follow up with the wraiths so that he can deal with that right. uh, shuttle play a little bit easier yeah we're getting the mind set up at the, the, the third and the 12 o'clock position here to keep an eye on like, oh look at this double mine as well so when he tries to clear that with a dragoon he might kill the dragoon so that'd be interesting to see if that transpires later on nice little uh, mind game there from royal trying to get some extra value from that play and yeah with the, with the vulture drop it will land just about um when he's getting his reaver out so actually the timings will look really nice for royal like I, I think that this will land just as snow's like not yet popped out his reaver so the reaver actually might not even be able to help defend in time I think it pops out just about as the vultures are landing. So I think with the scarab build time in, in consideration, you might not be able to defend against it so easily as uh, Snow here. Well, Snow's already getting his dragoons into position. Look at this. He's got a very good idea of what's possible here for Terran. Um, really realizing exactly the position that he's in and he has the reaver headed across but there should be a wraith popping out in just a moment um to shut down the shuttle at the same time the dropship coming in here what kind of damage can he do what kind of damage can snow do we're about to find out here that mine so well placed there in the front as well where's the wraith i don't see it here we go diving in he drops three in the natural which i'm a little bit surprised about but he is going to be able to run here into the main with the other two vultures they're going to get shut down pretty quick um getting a few probes but probably not as much as roll would have liked really good shutdown here from snell what did he do with the shuttle? Does it does it have anything in it? Maybe it didn't have a reaver in there? What what, what actually happened with that? I think we missed it. Yeah, I'm not actually totally sure what, what's happening with that. I, f I thought it was a little bit of a either a fake out or it must be some kind of fake out because I, I there's definitely I don't think you I think he would have used the reaver if there was one in there, but I could be wrong. 
Very strange. Well, I didn't see a wraith either, which kind of shocking. Um, after well, the timing of the, ro the robotic support base seemed pretty late to me. Like, it looked like he right. couldn't have even had... Yeah, I the Reaver wasn't even out yet. So, like I was saying before, like, even if he had made a Reaver to defend against this Vulture drop, it wouldn't have been out in time to deal with it anyway. So, I don't think he made it. I think he just didn't make it. I think he just, like, optimized his... min his production and delayed making the Reaver. Oh, boy. Snow not mining. Um, in his main base with all of his workers on the gas is only two uh, probes on that main base gas. I think he just saw it though. I think he just mm. saw it and he just corrected it. That's good. Wraith is out of course. Um, we're not going to send the Reaver across the map though. Really heads up decision making here from Snow. Another drop into the natural is going to drop two more vultures. Try to kill as many probes as he can. Looks like he might get like three, four probes. Pretty decent damage here for just those two vultures. But uh, this is where the real damage is going to come in. Trying to get here onto this rally point. Um, the probe transfer getting shut down a little bit there. But the, dry, or the the Reaver really helping out back at home to stop Vultures from diving in and getting too much damage. Yeah, you want these like double pronged attacks where you're getting a couple of probes here, but also while they're distracted cleaning up that Vulture drop, you're intercepting the transferring probes. A nice little mine detonation here at 12 o'clock as well. Quite a few things going Royal's way. Supplies looking pretty even as well, so pretty telltale signs of a fairly confident uh, Terran game state, I would say. Hmm. For sure. He hasn't taken any damage from the Reaver. He has the Wraith. Um, Reaver sitting back at home. He's dealt some probe damage. Yeah, everything going quite well for uh, Royal, but he's going to take on location. Command center here at his third at nine minutes. Four factories are done. Can he hold this base this is quite the gamble from royal right now can he make this work he's gonna scan and kill this observer but i wish he had done that before showing him the third base on location you know yeah I mean? yeah for sure uh mine detonation there picking off a couple of those dragons you might get another one nice that's big i mean it, it might convince snow that it's not uh worth it to try and bust this position now uh, after taking a couple of big mine hits and losing some of his units, he's going to come through with the uh, shuttle. Oh god, the Wraith is not chasing this. He's got to go after yeah. it. And he's going to lose a ton of SCVs. Oh, five kills. Five kills already, and this could be even worse here. He's trying to dodge that. One of those does dud. Another big shot. He's trying to avoid this the best that he can, but the Scarab's here Beautiful. dudding. Oh, the Rosie. one more shot. Wow. Oh my yeah. god! <laughs> oh. 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 oh my god, that was so many SUVs that just went down. If that did not happen, I would say Snow was in a little bit of trouble. But after that last SUV train bit the dust there, this is looking a little bit more snow sided. Holy wow, Saiyan. That that pathing of the SUVs to turn at that stage. Nice little mine detonation there, giving some compensation for the absolute insane scarab. What dark Dancing around that CC with perfection, like just like tap dancing on snow, making it look easy just for a moment there. The glimmer of like genius, but being punished on the exit and finally trying to do a big move out here in the center of the map. The nice little reaver connection there, but not enough dragoons to really weather this. But with the snow level uh, uh, reaver scarabs, he is like taking a lot of big pot shots here in his army and is going to be active in slowing this down as much as possible, forcing as many sieges out of royal as he can. Is forcing him to back up a little bit, even forcing the Terran to move away off to the side rather than gaining ground every second but it's going to be getting a lot of pressure onto this fourth base coming down so probably will get the cancel on that at the very least for his efforts here yeah he's probably going to be able to shut down this fourth but dude this is some great play by snow and man you have to just hold your breath when it comes to the reaver control from snow you never know what's going to happen it always seems like he just can't get that damage or that the Terran player is moving too perfectly that they're dodging the shots and handling everything right, but Snow somehow managing to make it happen. I mean, that was that was almost RNG there that that actually uh, had enough time or it blew up in time to actually get the damage. I don't know if even Snow even saw that or not, but uh, he got so much damage in Royal. The desperation attack, it works out. He's going to head back home now, try to just keep his tanks alive here. Um, no shots on the exit. So actually, Royal gets everything back. He cancels the fourth. 
He's got his third base still up in mining gear. He's still in a pretty decent spot, I feel. Yeah, I mean, this is crazy. Just watching Snow play is always such a treat. Like, someone needs to make, like, a compilation video. Ooh, look at that. Avoiding the mine on that Reaver as well. Someone needs to make, like, a compilation video of, like, uh, basically Snow's Reaver micro and then the remix of Artosis's, like, dance all day, infinity damage. <laughs> it's that, but, like, just a highlight reel of just Snow doing this crazy Reaver micro with that, like, on loop. That, that, That'd be peak StarCraft for me. Yeah, that would be amazing. Maybe something for the channel in the future. Somebody make that <laughs> remix, guys. We've got a lot of factories here. The SCV count looking surprisingly high despite all of the damage that's gone down. He's managed to scrape those together. I mean, thanks to the 9-minute CC that came down, uh, the third CC, he's been able to remake a lot of those SCVs. Looks like another drop gonna come in here. Maybe he can uh, try to get some more damage. Um, I think that's the drop there. Yeah, he's actually almost catching that uh, probe train, but <laughs> one reaver popping out, just gonna shut that down. And Oh god, carrier transition is coming here for snow. Um, is it gonna be in time though? Have we got the scan? There's the scan. He sees it. There's the scan. Okay. This is a big scan. He's got like a two, two and a half minute window here where he can, he, he can just make something happen. He now has enough, he now has enough window of, of knowledge to be like, okay, I need to pump pretty much like heavy Goliaths now and just, like, you know, start to push out onto the map. And uh, he's got like a two minute window where if he can just get across the map, get on top of this uh, rally point of Snows, maybe he can make something happen here. But the pressure will be on him. Snow will do as much as he can with this Reaver and Shuttle to slow down, force as many sieges out of Royal as possible and just hopefully buy enough time for his carriers to get into critical mass have two out right now with three on the way so we'll be up to five not quite that six potency that you'd like as a pros player but five is still something to contend with her yeah absolutely he's opening up the position here i think we'll see roll just head straight north from here he doesn't want to contend with those reavers any longer just start to head up the map so that he can make some ground towards the protoss players uh, fourth base another base down in the bottom left but as he pushes up here he might be able to sneak some vultures down uh, through that southern uh, flank there to try and harass that base meanwhile snow just buying as much time as possible slowing down this army waiting for those extra carriers he's going to be up to five here in just a few moments still pumping a lot of goliaths here right now moving towards taking a fourth base i think as well as he pushes up this uh, uh you know north this y axis here he should be able to take a, another base over at the top right uh, or the center right there and that's really the right play to do while the opponent is going for carriers you really have to start expanding all over the map and getting these pushes going right away start to put that pressure on and just expand all over the place where the carriers can't be that mobile and actually take down those bases yeah not only do you need additional gas to keep the production of goliaths and vessels going but just creating targets for the protoss player to have to run around the map with these carriers to take them out is actually a really good for you as terran you need to pull them out of position by time you don't want to get on top of these factories and killing your goliaths as they're coming out but look at this targeting down these uh, these goliaths pretty effectively so far is snow uh, has the a pretty handy amount i think it's five, four or five 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 carriers here giving him just enough dps that he can start whittling down this tank count and keeping the Goliaths in a manageable number as more and more carriers come into production. With three Stargates, he will go from five into eight, and eight is when things will really start to turn for Snow in favor. And if you have a ground army going and eight carriers with full interceptors, there's not much Royal is going to be able to do to stop this. Oh, man, dude, it just feels so hopeless uh, as a Terran player trying to face off against Snow, man. He just handles everything perfectly here. Kills off everything with the carrier count uh, at the perfect time. Royal, I mean, his push was looking pretty good, but there's just no way to push effectively against uh, Snow's Reavers, and he was slowed down so much. Just, ah, man, it's, it's almost impossible, it feels, to beat Snow yeah. in this matchup. Royal did everything right, I, I feel, but dude, GG. Royal has to tap out. There's nothing he can do. Snow just ungodly in this matchup and there's only one player left it's barracks i don't think that barracks has what it takes but 
the hopes and dreams of Terran riding on his back. All his fellow brothers are going to be waiting for his performance here in this next game. What kind of crazy build can he pull out against Snow? I feel like he got to do something wild to take this man down. Playing straight up, just never going to happen. Snow has the Terrans under his thumb. Will he have that all kill prize as well? We're about to find out. Barracks here, the last leg of Terran. Gonna be coming out on Retro versus Snow, dude. I bet Barracks is, uh, he's dreading this match right now. I don't think that he's happy to be here. I'd be shit. I, honestly, like, I, I don't know if my trousers would be yellow or brown, but or a mixture of the two, but yeah, I would not be a happy camper. I would just, I'm sure, be imagining um, the highlight reel or like the, <laughs> the, the player exactly. reactions of like how I'm about to get completely destroyed. And like just the thought of like his little feet clapping together. <laughs> oh man, it's uh, just crazy. The, 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 this guy must really get into the heads of so many of these pros. It's it's it's, uh, it's uh, honestly I don't even know how to like reckon it. Like uh, there's no way I can put it into words how how crazy it is how good this guy is with his remote control and how much he can get into the minds of these other players that to you and me seem godlike in their skill yeah he makes it look easy yeah he makes it look so simple um, the control like you were saying before on par with some of the best muta controllers in uh, that we have for zerg and and i mean nobody has matched it yet nobody has gotten to that level he's just a step ahead of everybody else uh, for the protoss and in his element right now all he has to do is take down terran players and he will be uh, getting that sweet sweet all kill prize um barracks i mean he's the underdog man we gotta cheer for him what's yeah. he gonna pull out here what is the strategy uh, we were talking before in the break about how when you're reaching this kind of level that kind of flash-esque level which i think we both agree that snow has reached at least in this matchup it always feels like you're behind and when you're ahead it feels like an even game against snow um yeah. so it's it's just brutal it feels hopeless what is barracks plan i'm really looking forward to seeing it so far he's not gone for you know, any sort of early uh, quick expansion gasless or anything like that he's just going into his gas getting his factory out and Stowe's getting the last scout so at least that's gone his way here a little bit of rng for barracks so far and and honestly yeah joking aside i'd be more than happy to see like an upset where barracks destroys snow like i'd love to see and look at this probe micro though with snow chasing down this SCV. barracks not quite on his manual move commands can't can't quite slide along the hex grid smoothly enough snow going to be catching up to the SCV over and over again can't break its ankles and get away from it going to be getting up that nice little early moral victory not only is he killing that scouting SCV, but it's also putting a little bit of a stressor on barracks he's not going to be happy about losing that on and now he's got to deal with the zealot pressure follow up yeah, zealot pressure coming in here snow I'm gonna send a second zealot across the map as well um try to maybe dive in as the bunkers coming down here and it'll be up to the scv control here from barracks to make sure that he doesn't take any critical damage oh it's the dragoon dragoon is here and he will be pushing things back he's not building bunker just yet looks like he's gonna start one now maybe he's actually being a little bit uh, greedy here by not starting this bunker uh, right away and um, he's doing a good job of backing going back and forth not letting the dragon get any shots without taking uh, some serious damage if, if the initial zealot gets a few extra hits on these marines and softens them up you feel much more confident coming in here with a dragoon uh, but with the vulture there and four marines that are more or less full hp you don't feel nearly as confident going into that so you can you can kind of get away with delaying the bunker you know there's not going to be an additional goons showing up anytime soon so barracks is fairly well optimizing his build here early game not playing scared or anything like that so far it's a good sign for barracks he's uh feeling comfortable here to optimize and not play too safe we have the robo on the way and as soon as that reaver comes out anything is possible but 
For now, we're going to have Barracks running around with that Vulture, trying to find a way in here, maybe. Get a few probe kills in the early game. If if he really hamstrings Snow uh, with some early probe kills, I don't think, which I don't think is likely to happen, but there's that possibility. He could end up taking a win here. It's, it's really important that he does some damage, though, that he actually gets a lead uh, in this early game if he wants to make that a possibility yeah i mean unless he finishes the game before reavers become a factor there's always this risk of snow just turning any lead that barracks had like completely on its head and like making them feel the hurt later on but right now doing a little bit of pressure play in the natural expansion does lose one of those vultures though now there's three dragoons to like chase down these marines and vultures so he's gonna try and lay down some mines to protect his retreat but not really going to be getting the kind of value that he wanted with those units initially and snow already starting to find some value against the, the trades against barracks even before the shuttle and reavers become relevant yeah that was uh great control there by snow and the mind drag was perfect uh, barracks mitigating that damage a little bit but still it's it's a tough spot First shuttle is heading across the map. This is an empty shuttle, I believe, right? Yeah, he's just using it for scouting. He's like just using the, sh the empty shuttle for scouting, and then he goes back and picks up the Reaper, I believe. Yeah, he's going to see everything. He sees the uh, armory. He's even forcing a little bit of a response here from Barracks. Um, but yeah, this is empty. He sees the timing of the eBay and everything, and the timing of the second gas. So, full scout. All information has been gleaned here for Snow and. We'll head back now to pick up that Reaver and possibly a couple of Zealots as well. Yeah, it's a nice little uh, optimized way of playing this. He's not like desperate to get damage done with this Reaver by like having a critical timing where the, the Reaver's dropping into the Terran's main at the earliest possible second. But and getting that scouting information with the shuttle kind of it gives him a really nice compensation of not having a really fast observer out because a lot of Protoss players love to get a really fast observer timing to confirm what the Pro Terran player is doing. So if you're getting that value anyway from the shuttle flying in, you're really happy because you're like having your cake and eating it. Yeah, and there there was a time when you didn't want to like Protoss players wouldn't want to reveal the fact that they were going Reaver, but uh, in this day and age, and with Snow being as good at. Uh, reaver control and shuttle control as he is it's like who cares if he knows that you're going a reaver of course you're going a reaver might as well use utilize that early shuttle time to to go and get that scouting information and um it, it really doesn't matter at all that he knows that this is coming because i'm going to get that damage no matter what I'm kind of surprised that more players don't just blindly go five factory against uh, Snow more often, mm. so they have a more crisper timing. I know, I know they they go five factory to adjust once they confirmed it, but I think like a lot of players could metagame him a little bit more and throw out that five factory, despite not needing confirmation. Mm, maybe maybe that'll happen uh, more later, but of course if if you can uh, force your opponent to go for like a blind five factory. Uh, and just um, you know, get prepared against that and know that that's probably what's going to be coming. Um, there are ways to, to mitigate those uh, eventualities, but um, yeah, if you can ever pigeonhole your enemies into doing something uh, just blindly, like they're just going to just keep doing it against you, it's pretty easy to counter, but uh, definitely the five factory. Uh, can be strong against a play like this. Now, Snow going to grab his third base over here in the center right. Has a second Reaver. He's going to go back home and pick that up. And he'll be prepared here at the front for whatever t kind of move out timing that Barracks has. He's got quite a few factories. Is he just going to go for a push here? Is he going to try to take the center left? I, I think this position is actually pretty good for taking a third base. What do you think? That center left is pretty easy to grab. Yeah, it's pretty easy to grab. I think he's going to do both. I think he's going to try and push and also take the 9 o'clock behind that push. Well, that might leave him a little bit open because uh, the push um, will probably come through this 6 o'clock or maybe through the middle of the map and that'll leave uh, some options for counterattack for Snow over towards that 9. But we'll see what uh, Barracks wants to do here. Forge is coming up in the main base. Snow getting ready for what appears to be like a long uh, mass shuttle play here not not likely to be a transition straight into carrier from this spot yeah. and barracks wouldn't attack through six he'd, he'd probably mine the six o'clock ramp to cover that flank and then push it through the middle to the right and go across the bridge 
Both options are available here right now, but Barracks, first he's got to get out of his natural, <laughs> which is a task yeah. already. Step one. Yeah, step number one, we got to get out here. Um, Snow not going to make that easy, but with the four, uh, or with the four Goliaths here, maybe he can snipe that shuttle. Already taking some damage on the first Goliath, but this is considered kind of a counterplay. It doesn't really always work out like that. Uh, considering how good Snow is with his uh, control, uh, usually he doesn't lose these, but maybe with a distraction here, with the vultures uh, head, headed over towards this uh, third base, maybe he can suddenly run out and snipe that shuttle. Let's see. I see the shuttle there over at the natural. It might be getting sniped here. Can he actually get that? Going after the shuttle, but eating two big shots from the Reaver. And the shuttle picks up and gets out. Not going to work out for Barracks just yet. Yeah, four Goliaths, the optimal amount to catch a shuttle. Is going to be able to get that as well. And the mine going to be helping kill that Reaver nicely. Um, just barely dotting that Scarab so the free vultures live. So Barracks having a lot more luck with these Scarabs than uh, our last player. <laughs> was unfortunately for Royal but um yeah like, I, I, I don't know actually I, I feel like Barracks is holding his own so far I do still worry for him this is this is Snow we're talking about here but so far Barracks is holding his own I would, I'd love to see him like somehow pull a win out from here but I, my money would still be on Snow that's for sure well he is gonna push through the six o'clock and a lot of zealots have been macroed out here by snow he's got another reaver as well but he eats a big shot there from the tank some good damage coming down on this uh reaver already he's gonna drop it out again can he tar target the moment that that drops down no it's too far away great drop by snow zealots are gonna be sent in though and they're going to unseize all the tanks so that he can uh, not take that splash damage again the reaver though not taking any damage getting some great scarab shots off dude these scarabs are insane. Crazy. Holy crap. So many good shots here from Snow. Just crushing this push as it tries to come down this ramp. Yeah, this is definitely nuts what we see. Like, even though we expect it, it's still kind of gnarly just to actually watch it unfold before your eyes like this. And yeah, it is kind of like watching the Protoss flash in action. And it's, it's bewildering. Like, it doesn't seem like natural. It seems like God is playing the Protoss race. And it's 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 really scary scary to behold like, i would not want to be terran playing against this guy i would i would I'd just be looking for the nearest exit well he's gonna keep pushing forward here but he's been blocked on the flank snow is preventing any more resources from being sent to this push location he's gonna snipe this goliath the goliath goes down that means the shuttle has free reign here we saw some scvs brought forward they're actually trying to kill they're actually fighting the reaver with the uh, SCVs and another great Scarab, another great Scarab here. Just over and over and over again, Snow getting the most insane Scarabs you've ever seen. He's gonna try and snipe this tank. He does get the tank. Dude, he's just wow. tearing him apart while taking another base in the top right. Yeah, he's he, like most most pros players could just straight up die to these kinds of timings, but he's not only like making it look like it's easy to defend against, in doing it stylistically with finesse but he's also expanding behind it like he's also playing like a pretty straight up game behind doing all this fancy stuff it's really a sight to behold well barracks is trying to expand as well i think he's got an scv over there at the center left but he's only got three tanks here to work with and a oh my god the reverse right in the face of these tanks one more shot if that goes off he's gonna kill three tanks dude he pulls back but he's just completely slaughtered uh, Barracks here. I mean, it's not as bad as other games that we've seen between Snow and Barracks, but this is pretty bad. Barracks has put up a, a relatively decent fight, but there just doesn't seem to be any hope here. Yeah, I mean, Barracks has had a commendable game here, playing fairly, fairly well, but I just don't think he can compete with someone like like snow it's just i think he, i think snow would win probably like eight games out of ten maybe nine games out of ten against barracks and then on a good day maybe all ten games yeah i think that's um a good assessment of these two players relative skill i think maybe 10 out of 10 would go to snow um maybe he would get uh, a little bit too fancy in one of the games but uh, if he was really playing on top of things he would probably win every single game and 
Look at this army coming across from Snow. He's going to get here with the barracks only having like three tanks. How can he possibly hold this uh, this third base right now? Um, meanwhile, Snow taking even more bases over at the top right. He's just not slowing down even one iota here. Whereas barracks is... He's crawling ahead on hands and knees right now. Yeah, and Snow with this quadrant set up in the top right, Gateway's being thrown down there. He's got another rally point to work with. So let's say even if Barracks was somehow doing better and starts to contain this rally point outside the natural, it doesn't matter. There's another rally point being set up. So Snow's giving himself options upon options of dealing with any potential game state that Barracks can throw at him. So even if Barracks was able to somehow get some leverage in this game, they wouldn't better do much with it. Well, he's going to send another round of vultures up towards that top right. Let's see what he can do. Let me pick off a few probes here and there. He's just going to get in. Um, DT here should be picked off by the mines. Oh, no, it actually does survive. A tank drop up here. I like it. Trying to get something done over in the top right and setting up mines in a good position here to defend this tank. He needs a scan. Scan needs to come down here. Where is it? He's going to drag the mines. Oh, dude. Oh man, unbelievable! Unreal. Unbelievable! It, it just—he—he he makes like a, a situation which looks like oh, okay. Barracks is starting to do well here, and he's just like, nope. I'm gonna clap my feet together and laugh again. Dude, it's insanity. Guys, make sure to like the video, dude. One like equals one foot clap. Let's go. We gotta get more <laughs> people in here. Claps. That's a lot of foot claps, man. This guy is just all over him. Oh, wait a second. The mind connection. I thought we were gonna see a lot more blue blood than that, but pretty decent damage out of those mines. And Barracks, I mean, he can't push right now, but at least he's not gonna die for uh, the next few moments here. He's got three bases running. Maybe he can put together a maxed out army uh, before you know Snow breaks him open and. Uh, smashes through everything he should be able to you know just turtle here and uh, survive until that max i just don't know how snow does it like he must have like a different kind of state of zen that we've not yet tapped into and he's just in like the, the pure ebb and flow the essence of starcraft like this man is starcraft when he's playing the pvt you know what i mean like he's he, he the, the the game becomes an extension of himself There's, he's no longer a man he is the computer he is the desk he is the the units fighting on this like planet that's some thousands of light years away you know what i mean like he's he's embodying starcraft when he's playing this game like what is snow seeing i wonder from his point perspective when he's looking yeah just he's just them. seeing he's just seeing the 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 actual matrix uh, right in front of his eyes as he's playing this game. We're looking at StarCraft. He's looking at the code behind StarCraft and just like manipulating it to his advantage. And uh, it's it's almost like, you know, what's the color? Do, do you see the colors the same way I do? Well, we definitely know that Snow doesn't see StarCraft the same way that we do. He sees a completely no. different perspective than uh, every one of us when playing PvT and here we go. We've got a slight move out here from Barracks. He's going to get some more mine connections potentially, but I mean, this is just drops in the bucket here for Snow. He's taken his half of the map here. He's trying to actually extend out and take another base at the top center. I've seen him a few times send a probe out, and actually Barracks has kind of shut him down from taking that part of the map. So that's actually something that's going in Barracks' favor, right? He's not allowing Snow to get up into the top left-hand corner at least, but there has yeah. been a rally point set up here. Maybe in some crazy world, Barracks, can, could he possibly take the top left and split this map in half? Is that is that a possibility? <laughs> it's, it, it's a possibility in TVP in general, but against someone like Snow, I don't see how he's going to stretch himself that thin and not die. So, uh, he yes, on paper, of course, but against Snow, I'm not so sure. Some good storms coming down here, but some good snipes as well from Barracks, picking off a few of those Templars. Dude, pushing out of this ramp against Templar Storm, nightmare, absolute nightmare. nightmare. And there's really no other way to push out. Like, maybe he could try to sneak his army. He could snipe a 
uh, an observer over there at the top side and sneak his army out of that location. He didn't like wall that in with uh, supply depots or anything. So maybe he could push out of his third base, but dude, oh my God, storms are just gonna come down on all of this. It's gonna be so much damage. And um, behind this, there's just so much for snow going on and he's just slowly whittling down this army. Well, Barracks did make his way up to 200. He managed to get that maxed out army, but look at how stacked up he is as he's trying to push out yeah. here. He's got to get uh, a little bit further out so that he can actually spread and split his army. Well, he needs more income right now. He's only got one base mining at 9 o'clock after being mined out on these uh, main and natural. So if he can't secure a fourth in the next like minute, I think he's just going to get bled out of the game. We do have a, also a set up for a carrier switch from Snow. I don't think he's heavily invested into that now. He's just setting up for the production that later. And also when Barak scans the main, he's going to be a little bit threatened if he does see that there's a potential carrier switch here. So Snow's kind of like got everything going from the only thing he doesn't have is this top left quadrant. So Barracks is still in the game. As long as that Snow doesn't have this top left quadrant, he still has a fighting chance here. But look at this big spread of Zealot Goon in the center. It's a big, wide open, gaping ravine of a center to fight inside of. Basically like the Grand Canyon here to navigate as a Terran player. Very daunting. Pros can attack you on all three sides at the very least. And with storms coming down on your clumps of tanks, can be very hard. If Barracks could just spill up his tanks a little bit more, Rather than seizing them with these clumps, he might have an easier time with it. But as it stands, he's being slowed down a lot by snow. Yeah, he needs to unclump those tanks, man. There's the carrier switch. It's coming. It's like a ticking time bomb here for snow. Eventually, that will uh, hit and kind of tear apart this push from Barracks. You know that he's not got a lot of... Uh, uh, you know, production left. He doesn't have a lot of income left to start to make those glides. So he has to get another base online to even stand a chance of fighting these carriers. Or he needs to push right now and just destroy. Oh my god, the storms there are insane. But he needs to push forward, try to destroy, either kill Snow before the carriers come online or get another base up, get multiple bases in the top left so that he can have the production to deal with them a little bit later on. I'm kind of like impressed by Barracks so far. Like he's giving himself probably the best chance of winning. A few good dematrixes here and there, but he's just taking such a long time to get into position to do anything that by the time he actually gets over here to put the pressure on Snow, the carries are going to be starting to come out, and he's not really got enough production to remax. Like he's only got one base mining. He's kind of gambling on like killing Snow right here, right now. And I'm not sure he's got enough to do that. He's not got enough vultures to soak up the zealots either. So if Snow wanted to, he could punish a, a mistake from Barracks, but that, and that's forcing Barracks to take a lot of time just sieging over and over again. Eventually now, he's got a chance to get on top of the rally point of, of Snow and put on the pressure, but just as the carriers are starting to come out in number, he will go up to four carriers in the next like 30 seconds or minutes, so he's now doing beautiful sonic storms on his front line of tanks, but actually I, I think there's a small chance here that Barracks could get on top of Snow and actually make something happen here, but it's only a tiny window, it needs to go now. Yeah, it looks like he's going to set up the space in the center. He's catching a lot of these units as they're trying to run up the ramp. Snow just trying to run away here. And, oh, God, he's going to snipe this Templar. Nice storm. But the tanks on the low ground, four of them stacked up. Really a juicy storm option there. Not going to take that. Five carriers are out now. Second, Cybernetis Core is done as well. Closing the news right now, but... Dude, do we have the production of Goliath to deal with this? I just don't. I, I just don't think so. We've got some minerals coming in from the center, but that could be shut down at any moment. I think Snow has some units just above that location. He could shut that down with. Yeah, I, I think this is a bit of a miscalculation here from Barracks. I think he should have gone a lot, a lot harder in this attack because now he doesn't have the kind of a Goliath count to combat these carriers. Whereas if he pushes it a little bit faster, maybe he gets on top of this just before these five carriers have a, came, came out and had time to build up an interceptor force. So now it's looking like Snow is going to start whittling down these Goliaths like one at a time and eventually put a clock on these tanks. And meanwhile, we have a little counter attack of Dragoons going out as well to pressure a uh, nine o'clock. Well, I think that uh, Snow has not realized that there's a base mining in the center, and those those goons could have killed that a long time ago and shut down 
that mining, which would have put him in a much better position. However, still, with the, the way that this game is going, I think Snow has a good advantage. The EMP on the carriers was really sick, though. And he's actually run up this ramp pretty efficiently. Getting, getting up here with the Goliaths is not easy, but he almost snipes the carrier there. He forces them back. Dude, maybe some way, somehow, Barracks can pull something off here. This is getting a little bit wild. Yeah, it's a little bit wild, wild west right now. Q, uh, Will Smith. And with these Jagoons 5 discovering the center base, it's a little bit unfortunate because two tanks just arrived and sieged up. So now they can't really pressure the center base and Barracks might just barely have enough trickle of minerals to overcome these carriers. He has whittled down one, killed one, and now another one's on red HP. So maybe if he can start to snipe through these carriers, he can do something. He doesn't really uh, want to be focusing down the interceptors because there's a lot of mining bases for snow. So whittling down the interceptor counts is not going to help him out too much right now. Oh he wants to kill God. the extra carriers. As well. Wow, that's nine carriers. Oh my God days how can you even deal with this as a terran player like this must feel like this must feel like what you it, it, it must feel like if you go to the gates of heaven this is what you have to do to earn your place in heaven is be god playing as protoss and this is kind of what it would seem like like this unstoppable protoss fleet just dominating you this is so scary, man. I mean, he's going to try and hold the center. He throws down another EMP, but it's fruitless here with this many carriers diving on top of everything, sniping all the tanks. Doesn't even need the ground army at this point. The Goliaths are not high enough in number to hold everything back. And some storms going down, but they're really unnecessary. GG. Barracks taps out. Snow takes that victory and takes the all kill here for this week of wow. KCM. Another Protoss victory. Dude, the lineups from Protoss have been insane. But Snow, just him alone, seems to be enough. Yeah, Snow is like an all kill kind of guy. Like an all star kind of guy. And he's taking home that like 2.4 million one. And uh, making it look easy, honestly. Like... <sighs> like, it can't be stated enough. If this guy can figure out his PVZ, then we, we've got a Protoss flash in our hands, and I'm scared. I'm scared for the pro scene if he can figure out that matchup. Well, consider my mind blown after this week. Number five gets completely hijacked by Snow. I mean, he's turned this away from the KCM. This is now the Snow Show, man. <laughs> yeah, it's really starting to look like it. And the points are starting to reflect that as well. Just three for Zerg, four for Terran, and look at Protoss just blasting off into the stratosphere. I, I, I'm kind of speechless by like the Protoss' performance overall, and Snow in particular, and Gandrifor on collision course with that hive mind right now, looking insane, Sam. How will we be able to shut this down? I mean, if Protoss keeps bringing the lineups that they're bringing every week, I don't see how it's going to be possible. Like. Where's the motives? Where's the, you know, the other Protoss players that deserve to have a shot in the KCM? Like, <laughs> what are we going to start bringing out the barracks of the Protoss race, you know? When are we going to start bringing yeah. out the Zelts of the Protoss race? Um, it's a funny way to put it, but, uh, you know, Zealot, the Zerg player, he's not exactly the best Zerg player in the world, and they're still putting him in the lineup, whereas... It seems like an all-star line from Protoss every single week this season yeah. so far. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, I guess maybe maybe they they like that. Maybe they like like you know having their own little uh, Protoss show going on and like you know having the limelight being stolen from the other players and they'll they'll only rarely give uh, those other players a chance to shine. But so far, it seems like they're happy to just roll their their best A team every single time and just crush these Terrans and Zergs that even dare try and like step out of their lane and perform at the highest levels. Well, I hope to see effort again uh, in the coming weeks here. Uh, I think it was awesome to have him in this lineup. Um, he might be one of those players that can bring things back for the Zerg. Uh, they're sitting there at the third place spot right now, but we need somebody yeah. who can take down some effort Protoss. And hero. Effort and hero. Yeah, we need we need to we definitely need a hero in there for sure. Maybe get a soul key showing at some point as well. Um, something needs to change here so that we can uh, start to reverse the the situation that we're in, where Protoss is so far ahead at this point, even that they might be a shoe in for that uh, 
finals slot, um, that seed to the finals of this season of KSCM. I know it's a little early to call, but uh, it's looking that way. And uh, yeah, like I said, if they just continue with these lineups, uh, it's it's pretty much in the bag at this point. Yeah, I mean, it is looking like that currently with this trajectory. Uh, we might see just a, a Terran versus Zerg semifinals in the making. And then finally, we'll be deciding who will face off against Protoss in that grand final spot. But I think that's going to be all for us this week, saying, and honestly, like, I'm kind of speechless. Like, we've had, like, such crazy weeks recently, and I, it almost feels like every time I'm, like, wondering, can this even get better? And each week, it somehow seems to manage to have more more spectacular fireworks than the last one. It's, it's crazy. We didn't make it all the way to the final game this week, but it was a blast, a pleasure to cast uh, this this week of KSCM, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And if you've made it this far in the cast, if you're still listening, uh, it means you like the sound of our voice, I guess, our voices. Uh, maybe you'd like to check out our podcast as well. We've got a podcast where I just finished episode five. It's on both of our channels. We're dual releasing it. So uh, if you're interested in that, definitely consider checking it out. Guys, that is it. We'll see you in the next week of KCM, more great things here coming up in those final few weeks. So we hope to see you there. Bye bye. Thanks, guys. Now, your friends, they are still fighting them. So, yes, well, we must be not killing balance negative. We need to look this year. No, we can't send our east numeral for psy. Here, we need a women to sit up left sick off. Gabs in our need our runner. It was an ears next to a Snake <laughs>
Snowy fam, Siskel, or Rimmer Cabin, even a scary flower, you want to see me to glow. 